When you received us in 2017 in Akasero with Mr. Ravi and his son Ravi Shankar, this was the beginning of the journey. Your Excellency, sir, may I also take the opportunity to thank particularly the Minister of Energy for having been a key partner in this investment because without them, will not be here. I thank the ministry. I also want to thank the Ministry of Works and Transport because they have been a cardinal pillar in the enabling environment in making this investment a reality. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the government of Kenya through the Kenya pipeline and all the other partners who have endeared and worked closely in this investment. Your Excellency, sir, I have two or three major brief submissions that I would like to make before you, before I invite my colleague. One is to say that this investment will be a major catalyst in reducing the cost of doing business in the country because transport is one of the major cost pushers. But Lake Victoria logistics will tremendously reduce the cost of transport between Kisumu and Uganda. And we would like to thank your initiative and foresight in enabling UNOC to be the key partner in delivering fuel to this country. May I take one singular honor to recognize one key financial, and that is Equity Bank. Without Equity Bank, and more so, Mr. Mwangi, James Mwangi, a visionary, a Pan-Africanist, and I want to say that an investor in the region, the Equity Bank gave us the first $70 million in the investment that was undertaken here. I want to request Equity Bank to stand up for recognition. Your Excellency, Mr. Mwangi flew all the way from Nairobi to attend a board meeting to impress upon the local directors here that this investment was crucial, not only for Uganda, but the whole East and Central African region. Thank you very much, Equity. I also want to thank and take this singular honor to thank the African Finance Corporation because the African Finance Corporation came in and acquired equity and put in another $100 million. This has been a fundamental achievement in this investment. Equ 
AFC, would you like to stand up for recognition? African Finance Corporation. Honor right, Your Excellency, Honorable Lokeris, as a minister then in the ministry and acting, holding the portfolio, signed the first letter guiding the Attorney General that this was a major investment for the country. I invite him. The vice chairman, after me, came Steve Mainda. Steve, Steve Mainda has done a tremendous job. Your Excellency, the President of Uganda, and distinguished guests, honorable ministers, I'm uh, very happy to be here. This was a vision. This was a vision which I conceived long ago. And uh, I'm very happy that the vision has become a reality after a long time. And uh, Your Excellency has asked me a few clarifications while visiting the terminal. I would like to uh, give those clarifications, Your Excellency. And the number one, you asked me about the leakage, a possibility of leakage of the ships in the lake. I would like to clarify, Your Excellency, that all these ships are built with the double hull. Double hull means there are two hulls, one hull inside the other one, so that with a gap of about three meters between the inner hull and the outer hull, so that in case of any, any damage or anything, there is a protection, inbuilt protection for the vessels. The vessels can never, there can never be a drop of leakage or even sewage is not permitted into the lake. Even after a voyage, sewage is taken and <coughs> pumped out of the ship through another vessel. And it can never, there is no pollution, not a drop of water or sewage or anything can pollute the lake, uh, Your Excellency, because all the international vessels are produced with double hull technology, so it cannot have any leak. We assure you, Your Excellency, that there cannot be and there will not be any leak into the lake. Another question, what you are uh, asking about the capacity of the tanks, Your Excellency. We have about 70 million liters of storage, which will be equivalent to almost uh, uh, 15 days of uh, the Uganda oil requirement. So this facility provides the basic strategic storage requirement, which is there. And we can store the fuel in these tanks for giving fuel security. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Uganda, Honorable Ministers, the Diplomatic Corps, and all the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, Tubanini is a nyo, 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 nyo. It is with the immense pride and joy that I welcome you all to the official launch of Lake Victoria Logistics. Your Excellency, we are deeply honored by your presence here today especially as you personally laid the foundation stone in June of 2017. And today, that stone which you laid has multiplied to see what is happening on the site. Is to establish a more efficient and sustainable solution to decongest the roads ease border post traffic and reduce the turnaround time and cost 
of moving fuel from Mombasa to this place. By inv investing a hundred million dollars from our shareholders and lenders, Lake Victoria Logistics has built the hub we are in today. The state of art tanker ships you see and you have witnessed this morning, this afternoon, have been built right here in Uganda. They have not been imported into Uganda. They have been built into Uganda. And today you have witnessed and you have given a rubber stamp of authority. They are made in Uganda. Today, two tanker ships, each with a capacity of 4.5 million liters, are operational as each ship can make 10 trips a month. We now have the capacity to transport 90 million liters every month. Our future plans include constructing two more of the ships that you have seen and witnessed today to bring the monthly capacity to Uganda to 180 million liters. Our 256 meter long jetty, which you have witnessed here at Bugiri Bukasa, is designed for efficient bathing and cargo handling. This is currently the longest jetty in the Lake Victoria ecosystem and can accommodate two ships at a time. We cannot speak of logistics without storage. This facility includes 14 storage tanks with a total capacity of 70 million liters. This is the largest storage capacity in the country and in East Africa and holds 15 days of the country's consumption acting as a key asset to oil importing companies. The terminal boasts of loading capacity of 20 trucks simultaneously and can discharge about 7 million liters in a single shift, the largest such facility in East and Central Africa. We are unwavering in our commitment to safety. The tanks are constructed, as you have heard, at API standards, ensuring both safety and efficiency. The ships are built with a double hull for increased safety and to ensure the lake is absolutely safe from any incident that may occur. They adhere to the strictest international standards, including those set by the International Maritime Organization and have been inspected and certified by the International Registrar of International Shipping, among other bodies. And our jetty meets the highest safety standards. Our maiden vessel, MT Kabaka Mutebi II, has completed 55 voyages transporting a total of 132 million liters into this country. Today, in your presence, Your Excellency, we launch our second vessel, MT Elgon, to continue delivering excellent service to the 44 oil companies that have signed up. Yes, as you already are aware, uh, under this project, McCarthy has constructed the jetty for the docking of vessels uh, with that capacity, which has been told to us 4.5 million liters each and with the capacity to store 70 million. And I, as I already hinted, they are willing to expand that capacity to a bigger capacity. And that is God sent to, for me 
as a minister who is in charge of transport. Our country, being landlinked, we have been relying or and we continue to rely heavily on road transport for the transportation of our cargo, including fuel and petroleum products. This road transport comes along with a number of costs, such as high road maintenance costs, fuel adulteration. Sometimes people wonder why the fuel they get in their vehicles is not good. This happens because of some of the improper means by which our fuel is transported. And transported. Traffic congestion. If one of you have been moving on Ginger Road of recent, you know what's happening on that road. Road accidents and related non-tariff barriers that cause delays and increase the costs of, for transportation. It's, it is a deliberate government policy to reduce the number of trucks ferrying petroleum products on our roads from Kenya, Kisumu Eldoret to Uganda. The emphasis is to have these products transported by either rail, which are already rehabilitating, again, thanks to Excellency for putting emphasis on rehabilitating the rail, water transport, and any other safer means. This effort will greatly reduce on the high road maintenance costs, traffic congestion on our roads, and the frequent associated road accidents. It is in this regard that government of Uganda continues to encourage the private sector to invest in water transport in accordance with the divestiture and liberalization policies. Government shall retain the role of regulation of all transport services and setting standards to ensure safety and efficiency in the subsector. Therefore, my ministry recognizes the importance of water transport to Uganda and is committed to creating an environment in which the subsector can maximize its potential, not only for the benefit of our economy, but also for the region. Your Excellency, Lake Victoria is a transboundary resource shared by the three East African countries and a major source of water, for water, of water domestic and industrial, for both domestic and industrial consumption, hydropower generation, and fisheries. In the event of an oil spill, which I don't think would happen, this would cause pollution to the lake environment with a devastating effect to freshwater life. It is our role to ensure that the transportation of petroleum products on this lake is done in conformity with international standards to avoid such occurrences as an oil spill. Your Excellency, Mahathi developed and, it, and their, their plan has, al has also been endorsed, examined and endorsed by the International Marine Organization, even with the, the assurance that the vessels are double hull and there's very little risk, if any, that there will ever be an oil spill, we demanded of them to develop an emergency response plan in the event of an oil spill. That response plan was examined and passed and endorsed by the International Maritime Organization. In line with the, with the above, the government of Uganda, through my ministry, ratified a number of international maritime conventions. Most important is the International Convention for the Prevention of Marine Maritime Pollution from Ships, MAPOL, and the International Convention on Safety of Life at Sea, SOLAS. These ensure that ships and vessels are constructed and operated in accordance with international standards of mar maritime, of marine environment and safety. I just want to again reassure you, Your Excellency, and the, uh, the Ugandans and all the people involved that these vessels are very, very safe. I know that there are many experts in petroleum products, uh, products transportation and marketing business present at this function, as already mentioned. I'm confident that this facility will provide an avenue for excellence, excellent collaboration between Mahath and this business sector to help reduce the cost of fuel in Uganda and the region. Therefore, I want to encourage all the oil marketing companies operating in this region to give their support to this facility so that we can all succeed. Your Excellency, my ministry is also responsible 
for the construction of the road, Kaukutu Werenga. Uh, it's a 14 meter road, uh, which we are going to construct with the uh, with all the safety provisions, including a walkway, covered walkway, and a good drainage, uh, which will be servicing this facility. The request which Honorable Mukula has put to you of extending the to the to the uh, to the landing site had already, had already been put at my desk and it's under consideration. We have already assured uh, the people that uh, since this is a project which is a, a build, which is a pre-financed, and it's the same company which is working, we shall request of it to make that extension. It's about two kilometers of the of, uh, of road, and we know it, 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 will, it will be accommodated in this project. Your Excellency, this project, this road network, will link to the Nakauka Kasanje Mpiji uh, road connection. We are going to have an interchange at the main Entebbe road uh, uh, junction so that the trucks living here going to the west and going to Congo and Rwanda, they don't need to go back to Kampala. They'll just go through the, the new road, Nakauka Kasanje Mpiji, and hit the Mpiji Masaka road. That way we shall be able to reduce on the traffic congestion. Once again, I wish to thank and congratulate Mahathi for putting up such a magnificent facility that will help Uganda and the region in the transportation of our petroleum products. I thank you very much, Your Excellency, for God and my country. Um, Honorable members of parliament, the chairman and directors of Mahathi Infra Uganda Limited, all government officials present and the community of Bokasa and the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, with me, I have uh, the Minister of State for Finance, Honorable Musa Sizi, who has come to stand in for the ministry. And Honorable Lokeris has been uh, introduced, and Jeno Katumba Amala. Your Excellency, I am so excited and I'm happy that you have found time to come yourself to this place to officiate because this has been the wish of Mahati Infra Uganda Limited. I visited this place three times. This is my third time. And we were planning for the D day when you come here and do the official commissioning. Thank you so much for finding time to come and encourage the investors more. I am delighted. The last time I was here, sir, I think we were bathing Mount Elgon. It is a ritual that we do to let her go into the waters. I was excited and I started talking about ships made in Uganda. And I don't think there are many Ugandans who know that Uganda has upgraded to that level, where we are manufacturing huge ships. We've been talking about electric cars, and it is exciting. This is equally exciting, Your Excellency. And I want to thank Mahati, because when I came here, I asked whether they are training our staff, because we need technical transfer impacted on our staff and I was assured by the chairman that we have staff from the Minister of Energy, Minister of Works and Transport, Minister of Water and Environment being trained here. Thank you so much for that intervention. This project, sir, is a significant milestone in Uganda's energy sector and it is a testament to our country's commitment to diversifying fuel import routes and promoting economic growth. The Minister of Energy and, Min and Mineral Development is the lead entity for sustainable energy development and sustainable energy development and utilization of petroleum and mineral resources. Following your guidance, sir, the development of petroleum resources specifically has focused on the following. One, to achieve sustainable production and utilization of the country's oil and gas resources. And two, 
to strengthen policy, legal, and regulatory frameworks, as well as institutional capacity of oil and gas industry. Three, to enhance local capacity to participate in oil and gas operations. And four, to promote private investment in oil and gas industry. And lastly, to enhance quality health, safety, security, and environment. We also plan to improve security of supply of refined petroleum products. Your Excellency, to improve the security of supply of refined petroleum products in this country, the downstream petroleum subsector was liberalized way back in 1994, given that the country was experiencing rampant supply shortfalls as well as sporadic pump prices as dictated through a curtail by a handful of international oil marketing companies that were operating in this industry. And following the liberalization, sir, a number of new companies entered the industry, but mainly in the areas of uh, importation, road transportation, wholesaling, uh, distribution, and retailing. It took over 20 years after liberalization for a, for a company to show serious investment in undertaking the high capital intensive and careful investment in developing a fuel transportation system by ships over Lake Victoria. That's why my ministry welcomed the proposal from Mahat Infra Uganda Limited to undertake this key project which leverages, among others, on the availability of the Lake uh, Victoria water resource and appropriate infrastructure at Kenya Pipeline Company's Chisum Terminal to facilitate such ventures. I am glad that the company has successfully undertaken the development of bulk storage uh, terminal and a jetty at this place, Bujiri Bukasa, alongside ships for lake transport of petroleum products. These have been implemented amid these various challenges, as has been mentioned, like COVID-19 pandemic, that disrupted the, the roadmap. The ministry will therefore continue to provide policy directions and shall undertake uh, supervision. Speaking as a, a majority shareholder in the Uganda National Oil Company, I pledge commitment and collaboration with the Mahathi Infra Uganda Limited. And I heard the chairman mentioning the challenge, the bathing challenge that they have, which will require myself to speak to my counterparts, my colleagues across in Kenya, to see how they can come in to decide whether to dredge so that they can create the depth that is required. I have noted this, and I think next week on Tuesday, I will be having the first meeting with the PS Liban Mohammadi of Kenya, and uh, I would require, request that I get one of you to attend that meeting. This will have to be sorted out so that we can achieve the critical objective of uh, uh, security of supply and uh, affordability of the, pr of the prices. Um, your Excellency, the Mahathi Infra cargo ship is a state-of-the-art vessel. I toured it, and it, I think it was my first time to enter it. And uh, this will transport fuel from Kisumu to this place. It's going to be the first time. They'll be providing a reliable and efficient supply chain for petroleum products to this country. Therefore, this project is a result of very hard work and dedication from Mahathi Infra Uganda Limited, and I commend them for their efforts. Your Excellency, I would like to address this to the OMCs, the oil marketing companies. We are making good conducive environment to you our expectations, as mentioned by General Katumba Amala, is to see um, 
affordable or reduced pump prices. This is what everybody is expecting. Your Excellency, when I went to Mombasa to receive the maiden ship that carried our cargo, I received numerous congratulation messages, but they were followed up by this question. How are the pump prices going to be affected? Honorable, I'm after Ganaka. Kulika ye Mombasa, na I'm after Ganaka. So if we are reducing transport costs by almost 50%, if UNOC is reducing logistical costs, costs by jumping the multi-layers that had been introduced by the government-to-government -government system in Kenya, is that going to come with kind of an affordability, you know, on the tariff or on the pump price? That's a question. So my request to the oil marketing companies is really not to target super profits because an opportunity has come. No, please help us because the president's vision has been clear. Security of supply of the products, but also competitive prices. Don't hike the prices because an opportunity has come. I thought I should do. let this out, and I'm planning to meet you, all the oil marketing companies in Uganda, to discuss further. We would like to see Ugandans celebrating the new policy direction introduced by the president. And this can be seen only in the security of supply, but also the affordability and the competitiveness of the prices. Your Excellency, this project is going to help me handle the issue of CO2 emission. We've been attending international conferences where we are lumped together with countries that do omit CO2. Uganda's CO2 comes basically from transportation. Basically. We are not an emitting company. So this project has come in handy. When we go to attend COP28, we shall be nailing this because it has been government of Uganda that we are seeing this kind of facility. So pollution levels will definitely go down. And therefore, I call upon those concerned to let Uganda continue with her mission to develop the petroleum resources. We shall not divert from this journey. The Honorable Ministers, the proprietors of the facility and all the invited guests. Uh, people who do not uh, understand the NRM strategy, they always miss the point. By 1986, the economy of Uganda, the money economy of Uganda had collapsed. Therefore, that time, the task was to revive the economy, the money sector, which had co collapsed. So when you hear people talking of uh, traffic jam and so on, that means the economy has revived. That's why you have got a traffic jam. You cannot have a traffic jam if, you, if people don't have money to buy cars and fuel. Therefore, in, during that phase, we could not handle the other elements of rationalization. Therefore, our transport system at the moment is irrational. Why? You have got so much traffic on the roads, which is not economic. But that's not accidental. It is part of the, of the strategy we adopted.
The economy is now bigger, but with those irrationalities, what you have been talking about, too many vehicles on the road, you are targeting that rationalization of the, of the economy. I'm glad the proprietors have, and, and also the ministers have assured the country about the zero chance of pollution of, of, of petroleum in the, in the freshwater lake. That's really a very, very big danger. And it's good that it is ruled out completely. The other cargo, we have been having a cargo on Lake Victoria, but this has been cargo which is not so polluting, even if it, even if it goes into the, into the lake, like the, we used to have wagon ferries going to Kisumu, going to, Mo, to Mwanza, carrying uh, coffee, carrying things which, even if they, they fall in the lake, they are not as dangerous as, as petrol. So it's crucial that that one is totally uh, ruled out. Now, in addition to the, this water transport, for, for, but I think you should also develop capacity for uh, other forms of cargo. I don't know whether it is not, it will be too much. So that you have got, uh, uh, because in your planning, you should bear in mind that we are, we are going to build the railway from here to, to, to Malaba, and the Kenyans are building up to, will build up to Malaba also, the railway, the standard gauge railway. Then the Tanzanians are building up to Mwanza, the standard gauge railway. Uh, it will take a very long time for them to build the railway all the way to Uganda here. So I think in terms of your planning, that is a, a slot you should look at for non-oil cargo to Mwanza. The one of, of course, water transport is a bit cheaper than rail transport. So I don't know the economics once the railway got, gets to Malaba. I don't know the economics of using the the water for dry cargo. But there is time, there is time. So I think you have got enough time to recover your money and then plan, pr plan for the long term. The long term would be cargo transport from Mombasa by rail up to Mwanza, from Dar es Salaam, by rail up to Mwanza, uh, and then from Mwanza to here, there will be wagon ferries. That is much cheaper. In 15 years or 20 years, if, if, when Tanzania builds a railway to, to join our, our Kampala Kasese line, that will take some time. Now, for the, for the petrol, you have now started, you have assured us, uh, but, but, but in the planning, in my opinion, you should also diversify to, to, to think of, of, of cargo, cargo across the lake, other cargo, not, not only, uh, not only for, for petroleum, especially to Mwanza, because I think that one will be there for a long time. We are going to build uh, pipelines for the fuel. The Kenya pipeline, we have allowed them now to build it up to the Congo border. When they, we are, when they, we, they agreed with us to buy directly ourselves, because in the past they were buying for us. I don't know why our people had arranged that. But when I came to know, I said no. We must buy for ourselves from the cheapest source. And they have now agreed. 
And now, and we in turn have said, okay, in that case, you can build a pipeline up to the Congo border, a, a, a petroleum pipeline. This, of course, will take time, but you need to put it in your planning. How will the pipeline to the Congo border in some years to come affect your business here? this particular business. Uh, then we are going to build uh, another pipeline from Dar es Salaam. That one we are working on to, 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 to Uganda. Uh, but this will take time, of course. We are already building the one for the crude, for the crude uh, fuel, crude uh, oil. Uh, but we shall also build the one for the refined products uh, uh, l l later. And then, therefore, Uganda should know that cargo will shift from road to rail and pipeline, pipelines, so that the, the roads are mainly for passengers and light cargo. Uh, I'm therefore very happy for this uh, group, Mahadi. Uh, you have helped us, definitely. I don't know how much cheaper you, you didn't give those figures, but I imagine it's much cheaper than uh, it was. The most important thing is for you to come into the market of Uganda. And, and once you enter the market of Uganda, you are talking about the market of Congo, DRC. You are talking of the market of South Sudan, the market of Rwanda, Burundi. So this is really a gold mine for investors. And uh, I, I would advise you to look for the durable areas of investment. Because now the recovery phase of Uganda's economy is finished. Everything is there. It is now the, rush, the rationalization to, to do things, what we call, they call it best practices. We are now going for best practices. And best practices do not include road transport for cargo. Cargo should be on the rail, should be on the, on the ships like this one, should be in the pipeline, not on the, on the, not on the roads. The, you should bring us other investors uh, the, who can invest in other sectors. Uh, Mr. Mkura knows which sectors, in which sectors we need, we need investors. The roads will be done, the one from the water, as General Katumba told you, from the landing site. Amen. Now, the, I'm very happy with the investors from Kenya, but our man from uh, Kisi could not pronounce Nakauka. You, you, you heard what I was trying to, what is he talking about? Then I realized that he was trying to talk about Nakauka, Kasanje, Mpiji Road. That's the one he was talking about. So we shall, we shall work on that road so that you can, your, your trucks can go from, from here to Mpiji without going to Kampala. I want to really congratulate all the investors Joshua Kulei, my, my old comrade, 
the, we used to work with Mzee Moi. He was a private secretary of Mzee Moi uh, when we were in the peace talks in Nairobi. The, the investors from India, the, 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 all the other investors, you are, you, are, you are most welcome. It is therefore my pleasure, I have already commissioned, it is my pleasure to tell you that I have already commissioned the ships. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is a gift to the president in recognition of his outstanding legacy and contribution towards the transformation of the country, able to marshal and offer critical direction in investments in fuel transportation as well as storage.